Welcome again to Wickerson Studios. I'm going to show a um, timber frame canopy kind of final copy of this parametric model of this um, wooden beam structure. Uh, I found interesting with a canopy lofted tool that's dependent parametric on that information. A little technical drawing, pen and ink drawing, and a full frontal view of it. And I always like this kind of artistic. I don't know, I'm a sucker for the artistic. Uh, specs anyway uh, that said i can take that and i can hide that and we can open up maybe the parametric model only and make our grasshopper script a little bigger so we can actually see what's going on and we'll take out that and there's our whole object um i'll show you how it's parametric and probably show you my script from the back forward uh this one i could show you in two different ways but I, i'll start a bit at the back <clears throat> basically i have a merge tool which merges this geometry, um, and I'll have to, uh, I think if I put that on, yeah, then I can see the merges. So I can merge these three bits of geometry, and they're all made in different ways. That's easy because that's just a mirrored copy to grab the bottom of it below the frame, um, below the uh, working plane, uh, world plane. <clears throat> and the top uh, is dependent on a pretty interesting loft tool uh, of bringing in two lofts, uh, they're based on the geometries that I have control over. And I thought this was interesting in these two lofts that this one you can swap out the X, uh, Y, and Z axis to get different shapes of that. And you see how that plays. I like the Y. And uh, this one the same. I can put in uh, the Y. I can put in the, oops, that was a mistake. I can put in the Z, Z axis, uh, the X axis, and the Y axis. And, of course, we need to be looking at that for you to see the difference between those. So they're kind of interesting. Uh, the Z stays pretty flat. But you may want to flatten that canopy. Um, that is structured from lines, which then are actually, uh, I believe you'll see, totally following back my radians, my pi, totally manipulable on this level, which changes the shape, which is kind of fun. Um, and maybe I'll just show you that as a tool here follow that back and you can see the canopy has to behave kind of like the wind or whatever shape you'd want to be or how you'd structure that by wire model and you'd have to engineer that but that's why you go deal with engineers um that said that's pretty simple uh in uh finding out where these are point dependent how i can have control over there and how i can make those uh tied to a grid and of course i can advance the size of the grid uh, which changes drastically what you're looking at as an object so if you're looking at this and all of a sudden you start to move it up, you're going to have a real complex, crazy object uh, in the iterations. There is a strange iteration tool that's happening here out of that grid. And even though I keep it low and count, um, what I'm doing is I'm actually taking that geometry. I'm raising those point geometries. Um, I'm splitting the list and choosing the geometry to raise up. Uh, splitting the list again, choosing the geometry to raise up. And you can see that it went from three pattern two to one. And that's all... Um, using a recursive kind of script, but since I only used it a couple of times, I was okay with that uh, without having to bring in hoop stake or anonymy or some form of doing recursion. Uh, it's uh, vector dependent um, in its shape and it is a polar array uh, as it revolves around. I use a little explode tree to get, to get more data to pull the lines out of that. So that top is a whole script in itself from here to here, uh, which is worth considering that block of code but the rest of it, uh, if you go into it and you take a look at this structure, it's pretty simple. Um, you've got this form, which is a collection of beams going in one axis, in another axis, and then it's vertical axis. And that's merged from data that was data dependent all the way back to the same data that the canopy was dependent on. So hopefully I haven't gone too fast. I'm sure I did, but I try and keep these video videos under five minutes. You can see the power of changing uh, well, size is the size. This iteration can change the iteration, but then you also want to minus. Uh, you also have a way of taking away. So you can add more iterations, make it a huge structure, but you can also remove some from it and end up with these different forms. Obviously, the canopy is dependent on how many of those things you split out of the list. Uh, you still have control over that. Uh, you can elongate it. You can scale it and do things like that. And then I have the same type of number slider on another split list, which I leave low actually like this number fairly low, like three, and the iteration just minusing one. It seems to have more of a cube-like structure. 
uh, 9 here is going to deal with the polar array, and that can be appreciated from the top view. Uh, 3, 4, 9, you can get these different patterns, which make for a pretty interesting view in the front viewport as well. Um, and then I have the minus iteration, uh, uh, iterations as well from the top and bottom, and I'll keep that fairly low. And then I have my scaling for my canopy, which is a scale non-uniform, so I can play with my X, Y, Z on different rates. So that said, it's an ugly big script. I can put it on GitHub if you like it. Um, I do like the script as a whole, keeping it small. Uh, there is a problem here if you're playing with the data, and I'll just show you if your explode tree data doesn't line up. And you'll see here when I play with this iteration, uh, bring that back to two. Hmm. Actually, bring it back to three. No, which one's going to correct that? It might be down here. I think it's this one. There it is. So if I play with that data, um, I explode tree matches because otherwise it'll say that there's not enough paths. Uh, uh, and even if it goes to orange, and even some nodes when they go to red, still don't fully affect your geometry. So you don't have to worry too much if the script doesn't look absolutely immaculate and perfect. So a lot said in six minutes. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to downsize the script. Uh, because that's secondary and you can always get that online for free um, and it's playful I mean it's basically about um, and I like to grab a uh, obviously I like to grab the models out of it uh, put this on here get rid of my parametric design and play around with what we're looking at as a model this one's still pretty interesting as well not so happy with artistic but it does provide a kind of interesting view of what you're working on thanks for watching